Hey, I'm estate planning attorney Paul Rabelais, and in this video, we're going to talk about your parent just passed away. Now what? So this is a tough topic because, and I'm going to do my best, but but it's a it's a fairly broad topic, and there's circumstances where if you your parent just passed away, and you're trying to figure out, you know, what do you do now? Circumstances can be so different from situation to situation. For example. Um, you know, I don't know what assets that parent owned, and I'll assume the parent had kind of the normal assets, house, bank accounts, investments, vehicles. I don't know whether the person who's kind of posing this question, now what, is the executor or trustee of a living trust. I'm going to assume no. Let's say dad had four kids, maybe named one of the kids as the executor. But now, you know, one of the other three who's not in charge of the estate settlement process has approached me with, now what? And then also, I don't know the, the relationships of those four children. It's one thing if they love each other, they support each other, they trust each other. It's another thing when they hate each other and then there could be somewhere in between, which is what I'm going to assume in this video, kind of a... You know, my, my siblings and I, we don't argue and we don't fight, but we live all of, over the country and we just, we just don't, you know, don't communicate much. But now, you know, our, our father died and there's this, all this stuff that has to be settled. So, you know, the big, big picture is, you know, receiving an inheritance can be life-changing. It can be anywhere from you know, receiving a few thousand dollars to get you through the next few months, all the way to receiving a, you know, significant sum that could allow you to pay off debts, pay off all of your debts, pay off your mortgage debts, pay off your car loans, perhaps even allow you to retire early. It can be a big deal. So the first thing I want to go over is, is what's next when your parent just died. Now what? I want to touch on what you shouldn't do. What, what I think you shouldn't do is just immediately after the parent dies, go commit to or go spend a bunch of money. You know, don't go to the car dealership and say, you know what, my dad died uh, last night. Uh, let's go ahead and order me the, the fastest and nimblest, you know, Lambo that you got. I'm ready to go. You need to be patient. Uh, sometimes these things take longer, sometimes much longer than anticipated. Don't act like you've received an inheritance until you, you know, have it in your hand. And even then, you know, once you have it in your hand, consider the, the long-term opportunity that you have now that you've received an inheritance. Okay, so, so when should you start inquiring? You know, you're one of four children, your, your father passed away, the four children are sharing, you've, you're not really involved in your father's financial affairs, you have another, you know, a sibling of yours who is involved. You know, the relationships are okay, but not great. When do you start asking questions? Well, let's say don't start asking questions, you know, um, at the funeral home. Don't walk into the funeral home and let's see, let's pick out the uh, flowers for dad's funeral that's going to be in two days. Oh, you know, uh, sis, you know, uh, Good to see you. Sorry it's under these circumstances. I know dad passed away by last night. I suspect you're in charge of everything. Where's my money? So really, you know, in normal circumstances, bringing that up with family at the wake, at the funeral may be a little inappropriate. Kind of by the way, whoever's in charge isn't going to be getting their hands on the money, perhaps until at least a death certificate issued, which is typically weeks, maybe even longer from, from that date of death. Perhaps somebody will have access to some money if dad may have put one of the children as having signature authority on the bank account and the bank didn't freeze the account. But other than that, really uh, don't worry about, you know, all the money disappearing the day after uh, dad passed away. But um, at some point, and maybe it's a week after dad died, maybe it's two weeks, maybe it's two days after dad died, it is um, appropriate, I think, to, to start, you know, inquiring. And maybe that inquiry to your sibling, to that executor, to that successor trustee may, you know, may sound something like this. Um, you know, hey, so-and-so, just, you know, you know for, for my own peace of mind, 
and my own kind of, uh, for, you know, from a, from a planning perspective, can I ask you a, co a few questions about dad's estate? And, and hopefully they say, sure, because you're asking that, that, that sibling, that person who is going to be overseeing everything and they have all the knowledge on the estate assets and you have nothing. And so you might say, you know, can I just for my own peace of mind, you know, get a little bit of information from you? They may say, sure, here's what you want to ask for. You want to ask for a, uh, you know, could I, could I, you know, would it, would it be too much to ask for a copy of, of dad's most recent last will and testament or dad's most, you know, uh, uh, living trust with the latest amendments, if there are any amendments. So you want to see what those legal documents say. And then I think it's also appropriate to say, you know, um, I know you've been handling all of dad's finances. Would you be so kind as to maybe just forward the uh, statements from his financial accounts or most recent statements for his financial accounts? I know it's going to take time to process all of that. You've got to work with an attorney. I certainly have an expectation that, you know, it's going to take weeks or months to get that done but at least it'll give me an idea and some peace of mind as to you know, what future expectations might be. So you know, if I were the executor and somebody asked me that, I, I'd want to be completely transparent so others you know, won't suspect that I'm you know, doing funny business with the money. And then, um, so you may wanna ask about that, the legal documents and, a, and uh, perhaps statements of financial accounts. And again, it all depends on what, the, what dad may have owned. Also, it's probably not too early to, to contact the financial institution, even though you're not the executor of the person in charge, where you were a beneficiary of life insurance or an IRA or some other asset that had you listed as the beneficiary. The executor isn't necessarily in charge of the distribution of that asset. If dad owned an IRA and named the four children as equal beneficiaries, all four children likely are going to have to establish their own inherited IRA at that financial institution. So the financial institution can move the assets that are in dad's traditional IRA. They can split those up those up four ways into each of the four children's inherited IRAs. So, if you are a beneficiary, then I think it is appropriate for you to contact that financial institution and uh, you know, let them know that you're available. They may send you paperwork that you need to fill out so that you can apply for whatever benefits you're entitled to. In fact, for many people in America, um, the, the parent who dies, often the largest financial asset is their retirement account or their IRA or their Roth IRA. Um, so, um, and then you can just deal directly with the financial institution on that. If you were going to ask that executor, perhaps one other question, it might be, you know, I know this takes a long time and, and by no means I want to rush you. I want to let you do a, do a good job. Dad appointed you because he felt like you were the right person for the job. But I tell you what, can you just maybe by email keep me posted on your progress as you make further developments in the estate settlement? That way, again, that'll just, you know, for my own peace of mind. So I don't think that's an unreasonable inquiry. In fact, the executor is likely to be compensated from the estate, likely a, a percentage share. It might be 2%, it might be 3%, depends on your state, depends on whether your state has some kind of sliding scale for executor compensation. The executor is likely to be compensated from the estate, keeping you informed, keeping the heirs informed of their progress, in my view, is, is part of what they're being compensated for. So one other question you might ask, you know, um, do you plan to liquidate anything? Are you, gonna, are you gonna sell dad's house as the executor? Are you gonna sell his vehicles? Do you plan to liquidate all of the investments? Just wanna have an idea of what your plan is. So, um, you know, just so I can, I can kind of track that progress and be informed. So those are not, all those questions I just mentioned, they're not unreasonable questions to ask of the person who was in charge of that estate settlement. And I would say, kind of at the moment, you may suspect some funny business. There's not funny business in every estate settlement, by, by no means, but sometimes there is. And if you su suspect funny business, then you may need to get more aggressive in requesting records in accordance with your state's kind of probate laws and trust code. And if they don't give you information after a reasonable request, if they don't return your phone calls, 
uh, reply to your emails, reply to your texts. I, I, you know, I hear that a lot. Paul, I, I know I'm in, uh, I saw the will. I know I'm one of three heirs and my sister's the executor and I keep texting her and she hasn't sent anything back. So I emailed her and I didn't get anything back. And so that's when, you know, everybody says, oh, you know, assumes the worst. So, you know, in a, in a perfect world, um, nobody does anything to violate um, another's, you know, trust and everything is done by the book, everything's out in the open, and the estate settlement process can provide all of the parties with um, more financial security. And in a perfect world, all those participants in that estate settlement will, at the end of the day, have improved family relationships due to the fact that you all went through this you know, together without any difficulty. I think that's the goal of, of most people who are involved in an estate settlement, they don't wanna to have to get mad at somebody else. They don't wanna to have to question somebody else's authority or their activities. They want, you know, everybody would like to, to improve the relationship as a result of this process. So the other thing that I suggest you do if you're an heir or maybe you will be in the future is make sure you smash the like button and also subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss anything and you'll be telling YouTube's algorithms to show my videos to more people. That way you can stay informed, have peace of mind that you're taking the kinds of actions that a reasonable person can take as part of this estate planning and estate settlement process. We'll see you next time.